All right, square roots, simplest radical form. Let's talk about your standard square roots first. You've got perfect squares. Square root of 25 works out nicely. It works out to 5 to the second power, which works out to 5. So many kids will go straight from square to 25 to 5, but just be aware that 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. That's going to come in handy in a few minutes. All right, then we have square root of 4. Now, most kids are going to know it's 2, but let's just go ahead and rewrite it like this. Square root of 2 to the second, which works out to 2. And then we have square root of 361. Well, that one might take you a little bit longer, but it's going to be 19. So 19 times 19, and then, hey, 19 squared. Square root of a square gives you that number. So take a look at that, soak it in for a moment. Now what we're going to do is get into non-perfect squares. Non-perfect squares. Square root of 50. When you work it out using a calculator, you get this. It goes on and on forever, non-terminating, no pattern. Now if you do another one, square root of 8, same thing. It's going to go on and on forever, 2 point something, something, something. Non-terminating, no pattern. You do square root of 128. If you type it in, it works out to a really long number. Non-terminating, no pattern. All right, moving on. So these are all irrational numbers. Irrational numbers go on and on forever with no pattern. All right, now here's the new stuff. Simplest radical form of non-perfect squares. So you could do square root of 50 and get that 7 point whatever, but you can also break it down and find perfect squares that are factors of 50. So if you think of 50 and think, oh, what perfect squares are factors of 50? You could think of it as 25 times 2. 25 is a perfect square, so I could think of that as 5 to the second. So that means the square root of 5 to the second, the 5 can come on the outside and you get... 5 times the square root of 2. So let's do another one here. Square root of 8. Square root of 8. You could think of 8 as 4 times 2. That 4 is a perfect square. You could think of it as 2 to the second. And therefore, that can go on the outside just as a regular 2. But there's still a 2 left over that was a factor that wasn't a perfect square. Let's try another one. So 128, you can think of it as 64 times 2, because 64 is a perfect square. You can think of that as 8 squared. And then, hey, square root of 8 squared is 8, so that can go out front. So all of these had a 2, a square root of 2 left over that wasn't able to be worked out. Now, it's not always going to be 2. There's other situations. Let's do a few more examples of this. Okay, square root of 45. Now, some kids have a hard time recognizing this. This is where you really need to know your times tables. Um, you can think of this as 9 times 5. And hopefully you're going to see that 9 is a perfect square. You can think of it as 3 to the second. Therefore, when it comes out front, it's just going to be a 3. So 3 times the square root of 5. Let's do another one. Square root of 405. Now, this one can be pretty tricky. Uh, you could do some dividing, working things out, but you could think of it as 81 times 5. When you have 81 times 5, you can think 81 is a perfect square. You can think of it as 9 squared, so therefore that 9 squared can go out on the front of the radical sign as a 9. And there's your simplified answer. Once again, 405, the square root of 405 becomes, if you work it out, it's going to be some really long decimal going on forever. It's irrational. But you can simplify it down by factoring out some of the perfect squares. Not all numbers have this trick, but we're going to tr try a couple more. Okay, square root of 800. Now, some kids might see this as 25 times 32. They just see that 25 that works, so they realize that that 25 can come out front because it's a perfect square. Now, you've got this 32 in there. That 32 could be broken down to 16 times 2. That 16 is a perfect square, so up front it could come out as a 4. 
Well, you already have that five out there, so you have to multiply those together, and your best final answer is gonna be 20 times the square root of two. Finally, there's another way you could look at this. If you're really on your numbers game, you could realize that that's just 400 times two, and then you know that 400 is a perfect square, you can think of it as 20 squared. So therefore it comes out, and you get there a little bit faster to the final simplified answer, but either way gets you there. So, All right, finally we have a crazy one. So I'm gonna give you all sorts of things. So we've got the square root of 75 times a to the third times b to the second. Don't panic when you see the variables. You still wanna look for things that are perfect squares. And if necessary, rewrite things so you see some perfect squares. Well, I know that 75 is 25 times 3. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. 25 times 3 gives me the 75. I'm going to think a to the third is the same thing as a to the second times a. Because that's still 3 a's being multiplied. a to the third is the same thing as a to the second times a. And then b squared is still b squared. Now, of these items... The only one that's not written in something to the second is that 25. So let's think about it like that. So the 25 just changed to 5 to the second. No big deal. The 3 is the same. A to the second. A by itself. B to the second. So now of these items, these can come out front. 5 to the second comes out as 5. A to the second comes out as A. B to the second comes out as B up front. 3 and A are left over on the inside. So that was a very fast overview. Hope it helps. Best of luck to you.